All right, that one's a lot of fun to play. So we're just kind of getting into a nice, you know, medium, slow, greasy blues groove. And we're using a lot of these shapes that will always work. And we're just basically kind of toggling back and forth between the middle strings, which I really like because they just, they sound so warm and full. And then the top four strings. And um, we're gonna invite a couple of, you know, quick techniques, uh, which we'll explore in detail. So let's dive in with this. So starting right off, we have this concept of kind of bouncing back and forth between string sets or toggling back and forth. We've got our basic workhorse shape of B flat 13. And remember, these are built on our foundation of just the guide tones, B flat seven. But by now, with a little bit of practice, you want to be able to see these shapes and hear them without necessarily having to play the root, because the bass player's got that, so you don't have to worry about it. So we're going to focus on the middle and top register. So we've got this, E flat seven. So it's just our basic workhorse voicings, a little chromatic approach there. And you can do that with any of these, like if you're going to E flat, you know, you can, or you can do a half step above, you know, move down either one of those. Um, looking at measure four, we've got a quick two five to the E flat seven chord. This is something that Joe Pass would do a lot, which I really love the sound of. It's just basically taking these workhorse voicings and separating them. And you can do this whether you're playing, you know, finger style like I am right now or with a pick and fingers together using a hybrid technique. And it's just basically taking, instead of playing the whole chord, it's just separating a little bit. So the bottom three notes and then the top note. that can you know give you almost a piano type of effect but these subtle little things can make your comping go a long way you don't always have to play the full voice or you know or the full uh, the fully voiced chord you can break up the notes a little bit you could start with a top note or maybe break them in pairs of two you know so use your imagination and have fun with that all right, looking at measure five in those next two bars, we've got our chord move that we looked at earlier. So this is a classic Joe Pass. The chord is just E flat seven. And this is just a nice move you have. You could do it whatever rhythm you want, but that's the move. And then the next two bars feature our common tone on top, that B flat. That's the glue that's holding it together. Uh, the, the next four bars taking us out of the first chorus, we're just using a lot of these workhorse shapes, uh, bouncing back and forth between the middle four strings and the top four strings. That's all that's happening there. All right, looking at measure 13, the start of our next chorus, we've got our uh, just a nice, you know, here's our guide tones on the A and D strings now. And so this would give us a B flat nine shape. And that moves into an E flat 13 shape. These would be from example two in our earlier learn and practice section, these workhorse shapes. Little turnaround, two five back to E flat 13. Now if you look at measure 17, now we're bouncing back and forth between these string sets. So we're, we're creating another little riff using repetition with these rhythmic figures. So from 17 to 18, we've got E flat. Just chromatic approach into that line. And then an E diminished seven, and then the same rhythm. And then a variation on our turnaround. We're not using a common tone, but it's basically the same workhorse movement. Now we've got a nine. Now the flat nine on top of the A13. And then just a slightly different uh, way to voice the G7 sharp nine. Moving into C minor seven uh, in measure 21. And as I've said earlier, I really think of, uh, the top note of each of these chord voicings as a little melody into itself. I mean, I'm really thinking about the top voice of each chord voicing that I play and how it moves through the changes and then essentially harmonizing that melody with a chord voicing that will work underneath it. All right. Um, basically the same type of, uh, you know, chord voicings, these nice workhorse shapes getting us out of that chorus. Starting at measure 25, we're in our final chorus of blues here. And um, this is really fun. We've got this, this kind of like, you know, uh, it, it just basic quarter note rhythms. Sometimes quarter notes can just feel so good. And we're just moving the, these notes around. So we've got, you know, the melody would be. Eh. 
just imagine a horn playing that line, you know, behind somebody that was taking the solo. This is kind of like in a Kansas City Western swing blues style. And then we're just harmonizing that melody with these chords, these workhorse chords. So now I hear like, you know, four horns in a horn section in a big band or a blues band or something like that, or maybe even a saxophone and a trumpet together. That's the idea of what's going on uh, through my head. All right, looking down at measure 29, um, we saw this example earlier. This is an example of using these rhythmic figures, uh, and it could be anything that you come up with, but then repeating that over and over through several bars, and that can create almost like a shout type of uh, sound or shout effect in your blues. And, um, you know, that's exactly what's going on, getting us through uh, this turnaround in measure 29. So in time, it's like two, three, four. Uh. Et cetera, et cetera. Just kind of toggling back and forth between those string sets and using the power of repetition to really get your point across. And then finally, we just wrap up this last chorus using these, you know, shapes to get us through the turnaround where we've got a B flat nine moving into um, measure 35, anticipated, G7 flat nine, G7, G13 flat nine, and then just taking it home with the same shapes. And then finishing it off with that nice kind of fat sounding middle middle register voiced B flat 9 chord <laughs>